On today's show, we're about a year away from the Kyrie Irving trade. So far, the risk that Nico Harrison said wasn't a risk has turned out to be true. Why is Kyrie Irving working? And what's one thing that I learned about Jason Kidd this week that made me change everything I thought about Jason Kidd? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now back to the Mavericks, NBA champion. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Maps your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, all that. Leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Let me know one reason why Kyrie Irving has worked so far in Dallas. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA to uh, and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. And joining me, as always, on a Monday from 1053 The Fan, what you got for me, Reggie Atatulo? Three days between games is weird. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot I, of time. I, I, I don't know what to do with myself. It's a lot of time. I mean, I, I'm finding things to do, but it's got weird the, to not have got the that tournament. attachment. We got the yeah. tournament. I watched Caitlin Clark and was like, if I squint, this is Luca, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Luca, Luca detachment uh, was, withdrawal, I feel. There was, you know, she yelled at the ref. She made some good passes. She hit some shots. I was like, you know, <laughs> almost the if same. You, if, if you get her to have some deceleration in her uh, in a drive, you just you go all the way there. There you go. We're almost there. So today's show, though. I want to talk about something I learned about Jason Kidd. I talked about it on the, the audio-only bonus over the weekend. I, I answered a bunch of mailbag questions, and Jason Kidd went on a live stream, an attempted live stream with Chris Haynes, and had something to say about failure and about losing. And it changed kind of how I view about Jason Kidd. And so I want to talk about that. I still disagree with, with what he thinks and says, but... I'll talk about what changed for me. We'll also talk about the Mavs versus the Kings games coming up this week because we want to have uh, episodes to preview those. So we're going to preview those games. But I want to start here. Mark Stein dropped a piece on his sub stack. It's must read for all Mavericks fans. I texted out the link and a bunch of uh, thoughts over to the subtexter. So if you want to get that, subscribe to the subtext and get that there. But I want to focus on Kyrie Irving because Mark Stein focused on Kyrie Irving in his piece and had a bunch of really good quotes about why it's so far worked for Kyrie in Dallas, where in other places he had a hard time trying to make it work and mesh and like jive with everybody, basically, for lack of a better term. Can I still use jive? Is that like I think you're good there. I I would assume so. So I hope Kyrie Irving, why has it worked in Dallas and been basically zero drama? A couple of the quotes that I found very fascinating from Mark Stein's piece. Um, at a 25th birthday party for Luka Doncic in Toronto last month, Irving was the last Maverick to close down the soiree with Luka at the end of the night. So they were they cl- they closed it down. They shut the bar down, the two of them. Another example, earlier in the week when the Mavericks held an optional practice for low-minute players, think your, your Omax Prospers, your AJ Lawsons, those kind of guys. So they, they held a practice for, for those guys. And... Luca and Kyrie both showed up unexpectedly to the session and played in the pickup games with these guys. Luca and Kyrie are starting to, or or at least like now, really stepping up as leaders for this Mavericks team. And I think we have to start there. It's like that's one of the reasons why it's working is that Luke, Kyrie is meshing with the other superstar in the picture because it didn't necessarily happen with some of the other places. Yeah, absolutely. Um it feels like there's a level of maturity, right? Like having having a different age dude. And we've seen him want to be leader guy, Kyrie in particular, yeah. want to be leader guy in previous stops. It feels like uh, the desire to be leader guy, maybe the experiences have met, have met up in, in that way. And then also, I think there's also something to be said for like kindred spirits and like personalities that mesh because – as much as I know that we had all sorts of conversations about do Luca and Kai and KP meet together. And sometimes it's just you, you, you meet somebody, you, you get to know them and you're like, yeah, no, we, we vibe, we are on the same wavelength. And it seems like there has been some fortune, some good fortune in that. And I'm sure that there's a level of work that comes into that too, but Kyrie and Luca seem to get along pretty nicely. And that look, having your two best players get along matters. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's, we like to, uh, I think, especially on the outside of the like actual basketball industrial complex, for lack of a better term, right? Like out on the outside, 
we like to pl- try and play 2K. We like to just use assets and move them around uh, spreadsheets. But in all reality, this is still a people business. It's one of the big indictments I have, like Daryl Morey. Right. Daryl Morey will move guys around like it's a spreadsheet. And there's the chemistry and the charisma and the human element of this that matters. And it seems like on that front, in multiple different ways that I'm sure we'll talk about, Kyrie Irving has has had a level of like uh, it's matched. Right. There's been some kismet there. Yeah, there absolutely has been. And we're seeing it. We almost we were about to see it, I feel like, with Luca and Brunson, right? Brunson was just ascending to that place. And I feel like him and, and Luca had just gotten a place where, all right, we're the two, we're the guys on the team and we're about to step to into where the that. vibes were immaculate. They were immaculate. They were. Oh, I miss I miss being able to use that drop. And uh and we were almost there with them. We never got there with Luca and KP. Never. Like never got anywhere close. It's one of the reasons why he left, the injuries, and no. because they just never really got on that same page where, hey, this is our team together. You're the one A, I'm the one B. This is KP talking. And let's lead this team and and be a leader. They were younger, a lot younger. Like Luca and, and KP were both younger at that point. And so it was a little right. different. But now with Luca and Kyrie, they're they've both kind of stepped into that leadership role. We're seeing them take it. And uh, they had the players only meeting and they, you know, ever since then, I think the Mavs are what, seven and one since then or something like that. Uh, they've, like that yeah. they've really stepped up since then. Uh, but the one question I want to dive into it with this is why has it been zero drama in Dallas so far with Kyrie? And because Kyrie said recently, I think it's a, a little bit deeper than just being embraced by the community. He said he feels he's been accepted way beyond just my talent on the court. And this was one of the things that, you know, when this trade first happened a year ago, Isaac and I really focused on is that if this is going to work, this was this was my thing because I, I, I considered it a risk at a time at the time and all that. You've got the Nico Harrison connection where he's known him since high school, since he, he was the Nike guy and he had that connection with him. And Kyrie was a right. huge guy for Nike, obviously massive. Yeah, the Jason Kidd connection, who was uh, Kyrie's favorite player growing up. And they have a connection going back to, you know, since Kyrie entered the league, basically. Sham God is also a family friend who's an assistant coach and, you know, works out with Kyrie or works Kyrie out before games and stuff like that. You've got that connection. He's a family friend of Kyrie's dad. And then Markeith Morris was brought over in the trade and he's a close friend to Kyrie as well. And so Stein said one league source well-versed on Mavericks Dynamics said this to him. Everywhere he turns, Kyrie sees people who like him and want the best for him. And I think that part's pretty empowering and I think that that's one thing that, like like Kyrie said, you know, it's more than just being embraced by the community. He's being embraced by this franchise. Yeah. Um, if I were to, like, infantilize Kyrie in some ways, right, you could look at him. And I think a lot of people have talked about him as kind of like an unstable individual in yeah. various ways. And I, that's not entirely entirely unfair but i mean some we have to be delicate in the ways that we discuss that um so pardon me if it's if it seems like i am being indelicate right but unstable force and so it seems like more than any other place dallas has a whole bunch of stabilizing factors around him you you mentioned all of them in fact some of them were the more obvious ones where we talk about jason kidd and nico harrison but of course i mean shout out to sign and shout out the ways that we you mentioned the idea of god sham gone you mentioned the idea of uh markeith morris are ones that are a little bit deeper and there's a lot more of those things around him in addition to right uh you have the smiling faces and it feels like there's less of the frowning faces right to try and take that metaphor and stretch it out wider because as much as everybody in the dfw will you know bang on walls and tables and everything (laughs) for everybody to remember that this is a giant place with a lot of people it simply does not operate in the same ways that some of the bigger places uh in the places that you have a lot more dissenting voices and people that are going to be a lot mean, a lot more mean about it outside of those buildings are going to operate. And so it feels like, and I'm sure from that perspective of like Kyrie's actual perspective, I'm sure it feels like there's less people that are out to get you. Right. And I don't, I try and say that with as little, uh, as little judgment as possible. But if you, if you feel like you are not in a defensive place, I imagine you're not going to operate defensively, you know? Very true. Completely true. And I think Kyrie has a, a role to play in that sense. The the who's out to get you kind of thing. And coming from the media side, I want to talk about what Kyrie has done to make it work in Dallas drama, drama freaks. I think he has a role in this as well. So coming up, let's talk about that. And let's talk about what Kyrie's role has been in this and why it's worked for the Mavericks so far. Coming up. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Robinhood, did you know that you, if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA as well. Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to that Robinhood Gold. You wanna check that out. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Also, want to tell you about eBay Motors. eBay Motors has you covered with all kinds of parts and cars, parts that you need for your baby, your ride or die. Passion, drive, patience with Bring Home the Winning Trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. They have everything you can need. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts to choose from. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with this eBay Guaranteed Fit, you know that this part is going to fit your car every time, 100% of the time, so you won't have to worry about sending it back. But if you do have to send it back, you can, you can get it back easy and painless because eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash with all the parts you need and you want. It's easy to turn your car into an MVP that brings home the win. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Uh-oh, guess what day it is. Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for subscribing to the show and uh, liking it and doing all that, sharing it. Subscribe to the subtext if you want more content, Maps rumors, watch film with me. Get uh, I did a mail, Maps mailbag over the weekend, did a bonus episode and all that. Subscribe to the subtext. All right, Reggie, we're talking about Kyrie Irving. We're yeah. a, a, about 13 months away from the trade, but now that we're kind of in this, this, the Mavs are rising back up. We want to talk about, and Kyrie Irving's been playing re- very well. Let's talk about, yeah. we're talking about why it's been working so far in Dallas. We basically just spent the whole first part of the show talking about why Dallas has made it work for Kyrie. I think there's, Kyrie also has a role in this, that he has made it work as well, because you mentioned that, you know, we got to be careful what we say about Kyrie and all this. He, he did some things in Brooklyn and Boston and other places to make it so that it wasn't necessarily a great situation. You know, he disagreed with, with something. He disagreed with the front office about things. He wanted a contract that he did, wasn't going to get in Brooklyn. There was all kinds of different things. Uh, you know, there was the whole thing with, you know, sharing the link of the, the, um, the documentary and then not, you know, apologizing for it and not realizing or not like coming out and saying, Hey, I did this. I made this, this mistake and admitting the mistake in any way and saying, Hey, all these people are coming after. I think Kyrie has done a good job here in Dallas and done a good job in his life. And I as soon as they signed him and we, you know, or as soon as they traded for him and we talked to him and talked to him before this season, even I felt that Kyrie has taken a step forward, you know, maturity wise in his career saying, you know, there was a lot of noise before this and, I'm just going to take a step back and I'm going to do some good things. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to be in the shadows and like, like, uh, like give money and donate to things and uh, do good things in the world. And everything that I still believe, I still believe, and I'm going to go promote, but I'm not going to like poke the bear as much or try as much to like, like push, push the envelope and push the, you know, the bounds of, of, of things in, in life. It also has helped that there has not been a global pandemic in this time, you know, like right. that, that yeah. was the whole thing too. And so I think that, uh, I think Kyrie has had a role in this where he has taken a step forward and given less things for us to try and go after him about. Yeah. And I mean, I, I it, it's worth noting that like the ways in which he, you know, takes care of people and tries to yes. like, uh, you know, stand up for the things that he does. That's been a constant, right? Even, Absolutely. even in the places where he has been somewhat problematic, right? Like there's still been a constant in there. You can probably, he operates from a place where you could, you could treat him as a good faith actor. I think the maturity is pretty much the big thing. And of course now I'm getting into a speculative place because I am not somebody who talks to Kyrie Irving. I don't have that level of one insight. So I don't want to pretend like I do, but it does seem like he has gotten to a place where he's looked around and like, all right, cause we can, um, I mean, Boston is one thing, Brooklyn in particular, like there were things where he was just being defiant. Like he just decided, cause it yeah. really was like, you put out the link, 
I think that you can absolutely get to a place where you could find a way to navigate that without it getting to the place that it did. However, it felt very much like Kyrie was just in a place of simple and maybe even the word petulant is worthwhile here defiance. Right. And I do wonder if on the back end of all of this, he looks up and he goes, I feel like I was right, but what was it worth? Was that Pyrrhic victory yeah, for right, me? Right. right? Yeah, like, even if, what, yeah, even if he doesn't think that he was wrong about it, like, like right. what did it give you? And so I do wonder if, I mean, obviously becoming a parent, you know, getting yeah. older, all these things, right? Those are all factors. But I do wonder if like the lived experience of those things gave him a way where he looks up and he goes, is there a way to thread the needle on this where I do not have to be, where I can work this and get to what I want and because I imagine he also still wants all the things that we talk about with uh, basketball players and athletes. He still yeah. wants to compete. He still wants to win and get his money and all of these things. And like having these things go smoothly all works in that. Plus, and another thing, and again, speculation, I do wonder how if you get on that market, right, he got to that free agency and it was very evident the market was not there in a big way. I do wonder if that is a moment of clarity for you yeah. where you get a little bit of cold water and you go, oh, it might behoove me to try and meet people halfway. By the way, meet, meet people in the in the Mavericks who feel like they have been operating out of desperation. I'll say that without judgment as well, <laughs> who in trying to in trying to make sure everything works. And if you look around and you go, OK, not a lot of people out here want me. And the person who wants me is trying. I might as well try that. Another thing is you 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 mentioned that the, the free agency market, which was, yeah, probably a big eye, eye opener. Like he he tried all he could to try and leverage or his camp tried all they could to try and leverage some kind of sons offer that just was never going to materialize in any way. It was just, it just was so weird. And that felt a little like businessy desperate, right? Like, like I'm going to try to raise my price up by doing this thing that like is such out of left field. And Mark Cuban said something on a podcast, you know, or like take a drink if you've heard if you've heard that before and that's come up here in DFW before. <laughs> he said something on a podcast this off season that I talked about on this show. This is la Kyrie's last chance, basically. He's like, I told him that. I told him that oh, this last is last chance. You this is last chance. You, Kyrie edition. <laughs> basically, Kyrie's like, Cuban's like he's got to turn like his reputation around here, yeah. and that's the owner of the team at the time, still twenty seven percent owner, but the owner of the team at the time telling the star player and the you know the guy that hadn't re-signed yet hey like you know this is this is your chance and i think he knows that uh and so i think that's another thing where Kyrie didn't then realized you know what like i i probably have to calm down on some of this stuff because it's starting to affect my it's starting to affect my money and my business and my family basically at this point i mean all the stuff happened with with nike and now he's with anta and now uh you know he didn't get any contract offers from anybody else. And like he had to settle for less than the max with the Mavericks too. Like he didn't get the full max there, right. even though he probably still is a max player just by sheer play play on the court. And so, yeah, uh, a, one about one year later, 13 months later. So I like, is the trade worth it? Has the trade been worth it? Could it, has it been worth it? Or is there a way that, you know, it can be worth it at this point? I asked Nico Harrison at the press conference. I went back and I, I tweeted this out because uh, Stein used this this answer in his article and I found it very interesting. I asked Nico, what would you say to people that say that this is a very big risk, this trade for the Mavericks? And Nico Harrison said, I don't see the risk at all. I actually see the risk of not doing it. And then that's when Kyrie looked over and said, Touche. <laughs> and there's me like giggling in the background. Touche. <laughs> The risk of not doing it. And now that, you know, now we're like, you know, 13 months after this trade and it's working for the Mavericks. It's, it's working so far for him. He's, you know, he's playing, he re-signed and he's playing well. And the team is playing much better as of late. Yeah, man, this is where we come back to that word that I used very intentionally. Desperation absolutely came in here, right? I think if you're a Mavs fan for real, for real, you remember the, the wayward times of trying to find another superstar to go get. Right. And there was always keeping your powder dry for the opportunity. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 I knew eh. I did that very intentionally because eh. I knew that that would. Yeah. Yeah, dog. How does that oh. feel? You remember that? You remember I need, that? I need, so this, all of a I need this. Chick up, I need this Chick-fil-A lemonade to cle cleanse my palate after that. That's right. That's right. And so all of a sudden you looked up and you were like, hey, what we got here, we have no more. We have got no more 60 inch TVs. I'm sorry. <laughs> However, we got the floor model. We got the open box special. Right. Yeah. It's been used some. It might turn off on you every once in a while. <laughs> Vibrant picture, though, right? Like, you, get, we, we can plug this in right now and see. And I think that you look up and you go, all right, so do we get out here with no TV, hoping that at some point they restock? 
Or do we go, let's take the TV and do the best that we can and make sure it works, put it in the circumstances that, and like that really feels like the way that you had to go. And I mean, if you consider the perspective that the Mavs had worked with, the ways in which we've talked about that trickle of assets that they've had, I mean, they were well on that path of the trickle of assets away where you needed to, you know, make something happen. You were getting down to the end. And if you've played poker, right, you get to a place where the chips are dwindling. You're like, we got to make a move. We got to try something. Right. And so I, I 100 percent agree with them. You had to take this shot. In fact, I talked I, I was talking on the radio. I think I was a guest somewhere and they were like, uh, do you think it'll work? And I'm like, I'm not certain, but you had to do it. And it absolutely mm. was a had to do yeah. a thing. And they've put in all the effort to try and make the circumstances as best as possible. And kudos to those, them because they've hit. They have. And it's working so far for Kyrie and the Mavericks. And it's a so far, right? Because you still just have no idea at, at the end of the day. And anything can happen in the NBA. We've seen guys seem really happy in their spot. And all of a sudden, they just leave. You know, everybody's waiting on the, the Donovan Mitchell. Is he going to leave the Cavs? There's like no, there's like, not really any tangible signs and everyone's just still waiting for it to happen. And so you never know with something like this, it can be very, uh, it can, it can be very um, like uh, fragile at times. And so, yeah. uh, but I think all these things have made it less fragile at this point. All the things that we just talked about coming up, let's talk about the thing that Jason Kidd uh, said this weekend that really changed my perspective and opinion on what he has done in Dallas and his approach to coaching. This is something I completely disagree with him about but it made me understand him a little bit better. We'll talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks Daily Fantasy made easy. Go check out Prize Picks and see what's available for you. All you have to do is pick more or less than the than uh, stat projections on two to six stat. Hold on, <laughs> you, you pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You log on, you go to prize picks, I'm there right now. You can go to NBA, there's a ton of stuff from March Madness, a ton of stuff for the tournament. Go check it out and see what's available. Uh, by the time you listen to this, everything will be different because, <laughs> because it changes so often and you can play all the time. You, you log on one day and it's completely different the next day because it's daily and you can get other stuff. So check out, see what's available. For example, they've got a game, the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves against the Warriors and Anthony Edwards. 10 and a half rebounds and assists. I'm going to go more on that one for him. They've got uh, Damian Lillard against OKC, 24 points. Give me more on that one as well. Uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, 31 and a half points for him against the, the Bucks. I'm going to go more for sure on that one. Put that put that one down, put down 20 bucks, and you can win 100 on that as well. So go check that out. They have all kinds of other stuff, fun stuff too. The Demons and Goblins, if you pick on those. You can win up to 100 times your money. So go to prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Again, use that code LockdownNBA for first deposit match up to $100. prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you. All right, let's talk about Jason Kidd. We'll uh, we'll save the, the Sacramento Kings thing for later. I may do a bonus thing for it so uh so we'll save that for we'll save that for later but let's do a let's do a thing on jason kidd right now because very recently i was a person that said it's time for jason kidd to move on his time his time is done because it's just not getting done it's maps have the same problems over and over and over again and i still believe that to be true but he said something with chris haynes this weekend on the bleacher report app where he went live he was sitting there in his car as at his son's baseball practice, which I you know I appreciate. I think that was great. Uh, the connection was so bad that it was uh, it was hard to watch. But he said one thing. Chris Haynes asked him about the Mavs losing five out of six games recently. He asked him about that stretch, and Jason Kidd, in a very Jason Kidd way, no one's dying. He said, "It's all right to struggle. It's all right to fail. That's when we become a team." And he went in on how. He, the five out of six games, everyone oh, everyone wants you to win every game, but you got to go through these things and you got to go through some of this failure. And so maybe rethink about the, all the things I've been frustrated about with Jason Kidd. We're like, he lets them, it feels like he lets them lose these games. These questions where we go, hey man, why are you not like doing something? And he's I'm like, not playing, I'm watching just like you guys. He says that, or you say, hey, why didn't you call a timeout in this moment to try and like maximize this game and try to win this game? And he goes, you gotta ask them. I'm just a coach. All these things we've been frustrated about Jason Kidd are all by design. He he accepts failure and actually expects it <laughs> at times because he wants them to work through it and he wants them to work through this failure. Now, when you get to a season like last year, 
that failure becomes missing the entire playoffs. And so when, when Tim Kelshaw asked him, when are you going to be concerned about missing the playoffs? And he goes, when we miss the playoffs. He's absolutely telling the truth there. I don't always tell you guys the truth. But he was. My question to you, Reggie, is what do you think about that strategy of kids saying this is when we become a team is when we go through this failure and accepting the failure and basically saying, like, I let this team fail sometimes because I think that that helps them grow. Uh, I think it continues the long line of Jason Kidd not giving a damn about what none of us on the outside think. Uh, <laughs> which I've got to say, to be completely honest, it's got to be really freeing because that that's a good mark. I mean, I think managing expectations is a part of the job personally. Yeah. However, if you just go ahead and acquit yourself of that, I I understand where you're coming from, right? Because for him, the ultimate goal is trying to win a championship. And I think we all understood that that is not a one year deal. And if you are in that place, you're like, all right, what is the goal that I'm working towards? Right. This is where we get into the cliche of marathon, not a sprint. Right. If I don't beat you out of the blocks on a marathon. Cool. Right. Like, that's fine. I know that where I'm ultimately trying to go is further down the road. And for like, there's a lot of reasons where that dude in particular would have that. Right. If you look at the way that his career went and everything. Right. Yeah. Like, even his coaching career to this point. Right. Like you can make some level of tie ins with those type of philosophies. So I can understand how you bring that to that place and then you bring it all the way around with what feels like Zen master type uh, philosophies, right? Like I could see how Maybe. all of these things come together. And like, if you really take it to the wider idea of life, he's not wrong. The problem is like, this is a lot more result oriented, particularly on a timeline and people don't really, no, it comes back to one of my favorite phrases. Ain't nobody really trying to hear that. <laughs> That's right. It's very true. And I'm not trying to hear that. And so when you, you get to a game where the Mavs have these seven inexcusable losses this season that I've documented yeah. and that I've talked about, where basically it's the Pelicans game where Zion Ingram and CJ McCollum aren't playing, and the Mavs lose that game. It's the Cavs game where, you know, Mobley and Mitchell and Garland aren't playing, and they lose that game. And Jason Kidd doesn't care, right? You go, like, he doesn't care if they lose that game because he's trying to get the bigger long term. He's always playing the long term strategy of, we've got, yeah. I've got to get this team ready. And so we've seen this team rise in big moments and make the Western Conference Finals. When he believes in this team, when the team believes in themselves, when they all can get there and tap the, the Ted Lasso believe sign together, right? When they can all do that together, then, right. then all right, he's locked in and, I'll coach and we've seen Jason Kidd coach his ass off in certain games in certain moments. But if it's the all right, look around and someone posted a, a photo of the Mavs ball from last year compared to this season and the difference between the teams and you go, "Man, we were all up in arms about that team not making the playoffs. Like look at the roster on that team. It was yeah. it's it's Davis Bertans. It's, you know, it's Theo Pinson. It's Frank Nilakina. Love Theo Pinson. Love, love my guy. But, like, you start looking around and you go, man, this team was, like, like tough. Reggie Bullock is not playing for the Rockets right now. You know, Maxi Kleba was, you know, Dwight Powell was the starting center still. Like, Christian Wood. I mean, you just start going through this roster and you're like, man, why do we care so much about that? But Jason Kidd looked at the roster and go, hey, it's not happening for us this year. And hey, I'm going to let them fail and see if they can figure like figure out how to win. And I totally disagree with that whole like, all right, I'm just going to let them lose games like this because you need every game. We're down to it right now. You can look at the standings and we're, we're doing standings watch every day where we go through and are like, all right, who won tonight? Who didn't win tonight? And now like coming down to the wire for the Mavericks to, to be in the play-in or not. This Mavericks team shouldn't be in the play-in, I don't think, if they had won some of those inexcusable loss games. Jason right. Kidd doesn't care about that. And it's like, hey, I'm going for the long term. And so maybe if he had stepped in and they had won some of those games, then maybe they're not as good long term. But I don't know. It seems like a, it's it's the bet Jason Kidd is making, though. Right. And for me personally, and this is not how a lot of people feel, but it's the way that I've gone about doing analysis of things is if it's defensible, I'll rock with you on it. And I do think his perspective is defensible in some ways. But the problem is it requires you to believe that when the time comes for you to do the portions of this, because like, I don't, he, it's a little too absolute, right? It's a yes. little too absolute of it's fine. I'll, I'll let them figure it out. But when the time is comes for me to do my part, I'm, I'm hundred percent capable of turning that on and doing that. And that you're asking a lot for people to believe that without showing it on a consistent basis, that my portion of this, like it's basically taking him entirely out of the evaluation process, right? Mm. I am above the evaluation. The evaluation is on these players 
and I will do what needs to be done when the time comes. But no, I, I need to evaluate you at, at any given time as well, right? You also <laughs> need to show that you are capable of doing your job all the way through this. At least I believe that and I imagine a lot of us do. And so if you ha- maybe it's just and I, it does feel like and I think we can acknowledge he does have a level of job security that I don't think oh. that I think is is different than anywhere else. And if you understand that to be the case. I don't understand why you wouldn't go to that place where you're like, I don't need to prove myself. And thus I'm going to, I I will operate in a place where I don't need to prove myself. And that's the big difference. When, when, when I, when you listening, look at a coach on your favorite basketball team and go, you could be gone at any given moment. If you don't serve my needs of winning basketball games and like (laughs) what, what what our team needs, Jason Kidd looks at his job and goes, Hey, listen, Dirk brought me in. Listen, Luca likes me. Listen, Kyrie likes me. And what could happen if I'm if I get removed and all of a sudden another coach has to come in and try and deal with with Luca and Kyrie and the the dynamic of both of them? They they're doing great so far. He'll probably take credit for you know take credit for some of that at a certain point, but he's he's there with a level of job security. And so he's operating out of the job security. He's operating out of that. And I think that 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 mentality shift of he's fine with failure and actually expects it. I think that has changed some of what I think about Jason Kidd, where I disagree with him doing that. But it makes some of those losses like, all right, he just let them, it just let it happen. So it's like, okay, well, do I think at least, that, at least there is a plan, even if it's not one that you agree with? That's right. That's that's right. Okay. Well, right, because because if they were just losing these games, and we we're like, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, you know what? No one's dying. It doesn't like it doesn't matter. It's like okay, well, at yeah, least right, right. At least right. there's like a lesson behind it, you know. At least there's right. like something being taught about it instead of like, you know, we don't really care. When, like, when will you be concerned if you miss the playoffs? I don't know when we miss the playoffs. It's like, okay, okay, sounds maybe like nonsense, but it's it's how Jason Kidd has operated. I think it helped me understand him a little bit better. Do I still think the Mavericks would benefit from a different coach? Yes, probably because they wouldn't lose these inexcusable games all the time, right? Like, it would be different. But hey, we'll see with Jason Kidd this season. This is a this playoff run and the end of the season is a really big like. All right. You made the Western Conference Finals the first year, completely missed the postseason the second year, and now let's see what they do. This is like a split the difference season for sure for Jason Kidd. And you know what's great about all of this? This is the best part about uh, sports is that if it does work out in the end and they win a championship, we're doing Phil Jackson Zen Master. We're doing it. (laughs) We're we're so doing it. He was so right all along. This is the puppet master. He psychologist. He played all the right cards. We're so doing it. Who are those idiots that were calling for Jason Kidd to get fired? Like, That's what they, right. how do they look now? Right? Like, oh yeah. my gosh, we, and we will probably. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I'll do. I'll do a bonus on the on the Kings games. I do think they're very important. So we'll talk about those, and I'll, I'll release that a little bit later. Reggie, now we'll probably we'll record that right now. If Reggie is still around, but uh, we'll uh, slightly now be back tomorrow to break down the the Jazz game. The Mavs do have another game between now and the, and the Kings games, even though they're very important. And then I'll also probably have a, a crossover with Matt George from Locked On Kings. In between those two games, that should be really fun. So check that out. Subscribe to the show on YouTube and Spotify and Apple and all that. Guys, thanks for listening to Lockdown Mavs.